In today's video, how your fat loss diet can actually end up making you fatter. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how the process of dieting to lose body fat can actually leave you in a place where you have more body fat. Sound terrible? Well, then listen up because I got to drop some knowledge for you guys because this is a common trend that I see and I don't see it changing, not recently at least. So let's talk about this process of getting body fat off and how most people do it and how perhaps we could be doing it, okay? And I'm going to use some information from a couple of studies that I'll link below if you're interested in looking at some of the science behind this. And what it really relates to is the fact that there's a correlation between the amount of times that someone tries to lose body fat and the amount they have of extra body fat. Meaning, the more times you try to diet, the more likely you are to be heavier. Well, that sounds terrible. So why would anyone try to diet in the first place? Well, there's a solution. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. So the idea is we take someone who's got some weight to lose. And the typical approach to this is a very restrictive diet and perhaps a lack of knowledge around nutrition, training, just overall well-being. And especially when I see people doing detoxes or these you know, radical low calorie diets to see some rapid fat loss, well, that leaves them in a place where they end up losing a little bit of muscle or lean body mass. And so the Minnesota starvation experiment actually showed some interesting research that hyperphagia, which is the hunger that we have, didn't return to normal after a diet until body mass returned to normal. So what happens when you starve someone? Well, they lose lean body mass. At the end of that starvation, and the starvation experiment, they didn't actually starve them. They actually got to eat food, much like someone who goes through a rapid fat loss protocol would do. Well, at the end of that, let's say you reach your goal, you get your 20 pounds off, you return to a normal eating pattern where you eat intuitively or whatever approach you take. Well, hunger is going to be elevated. That's called hyperphagia. When should that end? Now, typically you would think that would end when your body fat returns to normal, right? Well, the problem is, is that you've lost some lean body mass and the body recognizes this. And this is where we get into some real problems. So you essentially are gonna overeat until your lean body mass returns to normal, which isn't gonna happen until your body fat is higher. So you've essentially done the job of dieting all this weight off only to end up with more body fat and heavier than you started and likely in a worse metabolic position. And why is that? That's because at the end of this diet, our body is going to restore fat at an accelerated rate. So why am I talking about this? How can we fix this? Well, I see something a bit differently happening with the people that I work with. I work with a very specific population of competitors. We compete in physique competitions. However, we tend to do some pretty extreme things to get body fat off, like low calorie dieting, plenty of cardio. The caveat there is that we are not dieting just to see the scale go down. No, we are dieting to get on a physique stage which requires we have as much muscle as possible. So the priority through this process is going to be training and nutrition based around our performance in perhaps the gym, if that is indeed the, the person that I'm working with. So a bodybuilder, their goal is to keep as much muscle as possible while also getting rid of as much body fat as possible. So while they are in a tough position after a show, and we've all heard about rapid weight gain post-competition, we do not lose nearly as much lean body mass as someone who goes through a crash diet and does not resistance train or does not pay attention to proper macronutrients and whole food approaches to getting the weight off. They just, they just fast or they do some kind of a detox or whatever approach with the very low calories where they're crash dieting. They're losing a considerable amount of lean body mass. Whereas the study with Chris Foz from a few years ago showed he was actually able to keep all of his lean body mass through six months of dieting and six months of restoring, okay? The lean body mass did not change that much, which allowed him to not body fat overshoot, okay? He ended up coming back to baseline, whereas the typical person that goes through a fat loss phase without you know, paying attention to their macronutrients, without paying attention to their resistance training, or without having some type of resistance training protocol, 
they're more likely to lose lean body mass during that diet and thus end up with more body fat. Now you can imagine going through this approach a couple times, it's gonna leave you in a pretty bad place, but it makes perfect sense. If you're able to lose 20, 30 pounds and you put it all back on, well, in the back of your mind, you're always gonna think, man, I'll just do that again. Well, the next time you do that diet, you might only lose five or 10 pounds to put 15 back on. The next time you might only lose two pounds and you put five back on. You see where I'm going here. You see the trend, okay? Whereas us, the population of competitive bodybuilders or physique athletes, whatever you wanna to refer to us as, our goals each time we diet down is to take an approach to coming out of competition with intention of putting on more lean body mass, putting on more muscle so that we can get better for the stage next time. Even if we never compete again, the sport is about lean body mass, muscle, keeping it, building more of it, okay? It's just a different type of lifestyle. And though the two get lumped together, dieting like an extreme fat loss diet or dieting for contest prep, they could not be more different. And this is where I think the solution lies. Now, it's not very sexy to tell someone that they should go in the gym and try to lose one or two pounds a week of body fat. Hmm, that doesn't sound very exciting, but the difference is it's more maintainable. Yes, it's very exciting to drop seven pounds the first day you start a diet because you fasted and you depleted and maybe you lose 10 pounds the first week, but that's not fat loss, okay? There's a big difference between fat loss and weight loss, especially in these approaches. And that's the scary part, is that we get into a position where someone is overshooting their body fat so long that they're now well over where they started their first diet from and they don't know how to fix it. And unfortunately, the best way to fix it is going to be something that sounds scary to them. And that is going to be to maintain eating at that higher level for a longer period of time until you completely restore what you lost, lean body mass. I hate to sound like a bro, but you probably gotta get in the gym or find a resistance training program that's gonna allow you to put on some muscle, allow you to get rid of that hyperphagia, that hunger, so that you can get back to your baseline and then do it the right way the next time. Meaning, you diet slowly, you take body fat off in a manner where you're maintaining lean body mass. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully, this all makes sense. If there's more nuances to this that you would like to know about, I'll link the studies below, or I can talk about it in another video. But I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.